where a young girl was killed by the train. That might be attributed to the ghost they talk about. Most of the people who visit or work at the inn are aware of its history of alleged hauntings and poltergeists. Are they simply misinterpreting a natural occurrence as a paranormal experience? When you do a magic trick, there, there, is one, there is the way the trick goes in real life, and then there is the way that the people remember it. So when they remember something, it's much better than it ever was when it was performed. And it's the same type of thing, I believe, with, uh, with sightings and paranormal activity like that. If you're, if you're in a receptive state of mind already to begin with, you will believe it. You will look for things and make connections that may or may not be there. Whether the poltergeists are real or not, one thing is certain. As long as the walls of John Stone's Inn stand, the stories will never die. Many experts on paranormal events agree that children and adolescents can be magnets for poltergeist activity. Are children lightning rods for the paranormal? Frank and Jackie Walker raised their daughters Tara and Devin in a farmhouse in the Oregon mountains. The Walker's home, nestled in Kings Valley, lies on property once owned by its namesake, Isaac King, who was found shot to death in his barn in 1866. And there are three stories. One, uh, the newspaper announced that he'd shot himself. Um, uh, but then another one said, well, no, it was an accident. And then the third one is that he was murdered by members of his family. No one knows, no one will ever know. Well-known local legend has it that King's ghost haunts the property on which the Walkers now live. As soon as they moved in, Tara and Devon immediately felt they were not alone in their new home. They sensed something immediately when we moved in. I remember Tara and Devon, Tara first, telling me that she heard things. She heard footsteps. And I just said, well, it's an older house. We had a new home before, and this is an older home. And they, there are noises that are unexplainable sometimes in older homes. But she said, Mom, I think this, there's somebody here because I hear footsteps. Devon, seven years old at the time, told her parents that she also sensed an unknown presence. I just felt like someone was always watching me and like there. I just noticed that doors were shutting, no one was there, things were creaking in the hall. It was just kind of spooky and then all these other things started happening and I just felt that there was something there. Her older sister Tara observed several strange events that led her to believe she and her family were surrounded by spirits. And I guess the reason I believe in ghosts is because we moved here is because of all the strange happenings that have occurred. Doors slamming when no one's there, voices in the hallway when no one's there, footsteps when no one's there, stuff like that. Frank and Jackie dismissed these tales, concluding their daughters were anxious about their new surroundings. Then, one night, the parents experienced something unusual. During a dinner party, a guest uttered the word ghost. The TV came on, the water faucet started up in the kitchen full blast, and the cat food container was dumped in the middle of the utility room floor. We talked about it later, Frank and I, and we decided that we'd better listen to our children. <laughs> the disruption seemed to be the work of an intelligent force with its own agenda. I remember my mom, she was getting mad at us because we were fighting over something. I can't remember what it was. We were fighting over the TV control or something. My mom said, go to your room. And when we went there, when I went there, the door was locked to my room. The hinges were inside the door. There's no way anybody else locked it. My dad wasn't home. The mischievous actions of the poltergeist seemed to reveal a prankish sense of humor. One day, Frank discovered that a critical document he needed for work was missing. The walkers searched the home and office frantically until it turned up in a very unlikely spot. It was stacked underneath two other boxes, and lo and behold, the report was on the top of that box. And none of us had taken it over there. The girls have their own separate drawing area. And there was no way they could have lifted the heavier boxes and inserted it. I had some angry words at that point. I asked the spirit to please leave us alone and stop hiding things. I actually just came out and said, whatever you are, please stop it. Frank's outburst appears to have transformed the poltergeist activity from mischievous to helpful. Suddenly, it was opening the gate at the farm's entrance for approaching cars 
and unlatching deadbolt locks on doors for Frank when he had forgotten his keys. And he asked my mom and my sister and me if we had opened it, and we said no. So we hope it's the ghost who answered it. We think it is. Still curious, Frank and Jackie called on ghost hunters Dave Esther and Sharon Gill. Dave and Sharon use an array of devices to collect evidence of the existence of ghosts. I believe in ghosts because I've seen them, I've heard them, they're real. You can measure, you can use physical instruments, scientific tests that can determine if mass, if energy, presence, supernatural, if not natural occurring, you can document it, measure it. Everybody thinks you need special equipment to do this, and that's absolutely not true. Um, you can even use Polaroid. I got a couple that had uh, different sort of swirls. Miss Jackie has gotten several like that as well. But that one particular day, behind her daughter standing in the office, there was a misty. It almost looked like it distorted the center of the picture. Dave and Sharon felt that the combination of photographic evidence, thermal readings, and the first-hand accounts were proof that a spirit was present. Because the idea of having a resident spirit was initially unsettling to the walkers, Dave and Sharon talked with them about their concerns. They felt very comfortable with us. Um, they started watching for things and, and noting things that were happening and realized that they were not malevolent in nature. They were being more protected than anything. Having spent years trying to quantify spirit activity and researching the history of paranormal outbursts, Dave and Sharon understand the potential connection between poltergeists and adolescents, something the girls find both comforting and exciting. According to the ghost hunters, at least I think that's what they said, is that kids can sense the entities better than grown-ups. Is there truly a relationship between poltergeist activity and adolescent children? A classic poltergeist is a, um, a center of um, funny physical happenings, particularly object movements and um, percussive sounds, you know, raps and whatnot. Um, the center being around an individual, often an adolescent, but not always. It wouldn't be without parallel for a rather isolated family with several children to develop poltergeist phenomena. Now, whether the emotional state triggers it off at the beginning in some way, and then when it happens, adds to it and feeds backwards and forwards, we don't know. But the emotional state is in the person who's seeing the things around which they are happening. I don't think it's got anything to do with spirits at all. Poltergeist researchers feel that the emotional turmoil of adolescence can generate enough psychic energy to trigger poltergeist activity. Psychologists argue that reports of poltergeists are simply people's misinterpretations of ambiguous situations. Possibly what is being taken as a poltergeist may indeed be a prank. In this case, where you have the little girls, it seems to me that... that they started as a prank. They may even have started, after that, started to believe in it themselves. It's the kind of game that you play, and you keep on doing it, and you, you get to a point where you kind of forget how it all started, and it takes on a life of, of its own. It doesn't seem unlikely that you might be able to convince your parents of the same. Phenomena 